Joseph Kableta, uh, social media was a buzz with photos of you and uh, Honorable Chagulani, uh, Bobby Wine. Uh, what was that about? What were you talking about? Did you, can you share with us what you discussed? Yeah, um, uh, we were basically talking about uh, the plans by the incumbency to come up with a so-called scientific election uh, using COVID as an excuse to kill any form of you know, free and fair election. Now, one would argue that perhaps we've never had any free and fair election, not as long as Museveni was president, or maybe even before that. Uh, but now, this whole scientific election and scientific campaigns kills the whole idea of an election. Absolutely oh. so. Um, we're trying to find out how to respond to that because there is no fairness in it. Uh, there is just about no way we can, it can, they can even claim it is an election when it is conducted in the way that the Electoral Commission wants it to be conducted and uh, the compressed timetable and uh, the, whole camp the whole issue of campaigning on radios and, you know, all that without people meeting, you know, up with the, the electorate. Uh, I felt that was, uh, it's, it was a terrible thing. So that's exactly what we we're talking about, how, uh, you know, we should respond to it. It is good that you raise uh, mm. that issue with the Electoral Commission. Did mm. you know about the plans for a scientific election before because your appearance with Bobby Wine was way before? No, we knew about the, the scientific elections before. And of course, if anybody who has followed the way this government does things, they actually send out rumors and it's more or less like testing the waters. So they send out rumors, uh, this is going to happen, uh, you know, there's going to be this plan and so on. And what they try to see is to see if there's any heat coming out of the populace. But now, of course, after all the lockdown and what, people seem to be in a certain mode where they don't want to come out. And so when they realize that there perhaps wasn't anything, then they come up with the plans. But there was a plan earlier on, we knew about it. And there was a plan from, uh, from, from all the people in the opposition to actually counter what the Electoral Commission is planning. And uh, we've gone ahead to do it. Um, uh, you know, I filed a court case in which, um, you know, we have issues with the way they are doing it because actually the Electoral Commission has the audacity to say they went and consulted with the president on how the elections should be. Now, when we get into election period, he's not a president, he's a candidate. And he's got to be, that's why he has to swear in again after the election, okay? Because now he's candidate Museveni, not President Museveni. Okay, so, we'll get uh, uh, to the gist of that uh, in just a moment. But when you say plan, do you mm. mean that, uh, uh, because frequently the government has been threatening to impose a second lockdown, mm. is that what you imply by uh, their scare tactics? Um, I didn't think there was going to be a second lockdown. Um, I, and I still don't think there's going to be a second lockdown. I never ever thought there was going to be a second lockdown because, um, you know, it was just a way of kind of keeping you keeping you humble, stay humble. There is a lot worse that can happen because, of course, when there is a few things, then uh, you're demanding for so many other things. Then they say we can even take away what you have, which is their tactic of doing things. Uh, every time they ha want to wave something in, in front of you and say you have peace to talk, say this and that, but you must not go beyond this. So. I never thought there was going to be a second lockdown, but I knew that the whole threat of a second lockdown was actually preparing ground for the scientific election. Okay? okay. And, uh, you know, so you worry about this as we go and push this. And it's their it has been their tactic for all the years um, since they lost legitimacy with the public and they started cheating elections and all that. So that has been the tactic. So um, the whole thing was about these elections. If they are going to be anything close to elections, they cannot be conducted in the way that was rolled out by the Electoral Commission. That is not an election, that is something else. That is a reinstallation of the incumbency. Uh, it might have been best if they just said there are not going to be elections at all. Of course, they cannot say that because we have to have elections, but they have to be something close to free and fair elections, not the kind of rubbish that came out of the Electoral Commission. Okay, now um, this is not the first time you've dragged uh, government to court. Uh, we previously saw uh, you dragged uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Ethics mm. and Integrity over the Religious Faith-Based Organization policy. Mm. Mm. Uh, will you achieve anything by uh, this attempt with the Electoral Commission? Well, it, it depends because it's not just I. There are so many stakeholders. Actually, you would, one might argue, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, there are people who have a bigger stake in it than I do. So there are so many people who's, in whose interest it is to have a free and fair election. And all of them have come out. Even Honorable uh, Chagulani released a, uh, you know, a document 
uh, refuting uh, the kind of elections that they are planning, saying that the, that does not uh, represent anything like an election. And he had these reasons which are all legitimate. First of all, there is no provision for such a kind of election in the Presidential Elections Act, the Parliamentary Elections Act, or even in the Local Council Election Act. There has to be an interaction and the people have to have an interaction with the person whom they are voting for. So that takes away their right as the citizenry or as the voters, and it also takes away the right of the other candidates apart from the incumbent. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they even communicate it ahead of time and say we discussed with the incumbent and we came up with this, and so the rest of you, you just have to go by this because it's okay with one candidate. That just shows you how, how far down the drain uh, this country has gone. But we, you will agree, will you not, that mm. uh, when the Electoral Commission says that they consulted with uh, the incumbent, they are referring to uh, the current president. Yes. Don't they have that? Uh, aren't they allowed to consult with the president? No, they are allowed to consult with the incumbent uh, or with candidate Museven. Big difference, not President Museven. Now, when he's a candidate, he's equal to every other person who has expressed interest in standing for the presidency, if it is going to be an election. So he has, he's not supposed to have any special privileges um, in terms of agreeing on the roadmap for the elections. He's not supposed to. So the Electoral Commission, at the very least, would say, perhaps we have an issue that we are facing here of you know, uh, uh, this pandemic and all that, and maybe the electoral you know, calendar has been, is going to have to be squeezed if we are fit, fit within the time period that uh, we are supposed to have the elections. So sit down all interested parties and they discuss and they come up with an, a roadmap that is agreeable to all of them, not just one candidate. Okay, now uh, in, in a copy of the letter that I have mm -hmm. uh, of the suit mm -hmm. that you have uh, for uh, the Electoral Commission through your lawyers, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, b you demand that the Electoral Commission schedule a meeting mm -hmm. where all key stakeholders are consulted. Mm -hmm. uh, would you care to explain who are these stakeholders? Really? Everybody. Um, um, first of all, all political parties, because a lot of the members of parliament who are standing are going to be under different parties or different, um, you know, pressure groups, for instance, like People Power, which might not yet be, a, you know, a, a political party, but is a, you know, bona fide political force um, and other parties. Then also, with all people who have expressed interest in standing for the presidency, at the very least. Now, of course, it might be a bit wide if you go into, you know, all the other positions. But at the very least, it should start with parties. It should start with people who have expressed interest in the presidency. And then, you know, they gather around in one room. And then they have a continued dis discussion on what kind of ro roadmap is agreeable to each and every one of them. By consensus, of course, there might be a few who are in the opposite direction of that, where there is a vote taken and a majority of the people decide that this is what we have decided um, as a majority. Then, then nobody will have an excuse. Thank you.